We looked at all the together. Dithering is an attempt to simulate those extra grayscales. Let's keep it to grayscales for the purpose of this video. Just using black and white pixels. There's another approach we can take, which is called error diffusion. So what we do, and we'll still use black and white to do this, we take our pixel, and let's start with this one, which has got the value 128. So it's mid-gray. We can either set it to be white, 255, or black, zero so we choose the one which is closer so in this case 255 is slightly closer than zero so we set that to be 255 now we can calculate the error in the value we've given it to what it should be so this should be 128 we set it to be 255 so we've got an error of plus 127 that's how much brighter it is than what we'd expect it to be because we set that pixel to be that now what we can do is we can say, let's make the pixels around it slightly darker than they should be to compensate for the fact that that one's brighter. So we've got this one pixel which is brighter, let's make the ones around it darker. And again, when the eye looks at it, it'll average, it acts as a low pass filter over the image and it will appear roughly to be this, the right brightness all the way over it. In this case, we want to make it darker by quite a lot. Now the question is, where do we pass that error onto? Do we just put it onto the next pixel? Do we put it onto the pixel before? We put it onto the pixel below it, the pixel above it. One of the classic approaches used is what's called Floyd Steinberg dithering. And what you do here is you don't modify pixels that have already been set. So you're scanning the image from the top left across each row from left to right. So the pixels before it you've already set. And so you say, I want to take the error from this and I'm going to put some of it into here, some of it into here, some of it into here, and some of it into here. So let's start down here a bit. We've set this to be 255. This is up by 127, so we need to split that plus 127 and take all the ones around it down by some amount. So what the Floyd Steinberg algorithm says is that into this pixel here, we'll take 7 16th of the error. Into this pixel here, we'll take 1 16th of the error. Into this pixel here, we'll take 5 16th of the error and into this one here will take 3 16th of the error. What this basically means is that this was up by 127, so we want to set the runs around it a total of 127 lower, so our error that we need to pass out is minus 127. So we take 127 divided by 16 multiplied by 7, so this pixel we're going to bring down by minus 56, this one we're going to bring down by 1 16th, which is roughly 8. And this one is 5 16th, which is going to be roughly 40. And this one's going to be 3 16th, which is going to be roughly 24. So these are all minus. So what we're saying is that for the pixels that surround this one, because we were too bright by 127 levels, we're going to make all the ones below it less bright by certain amounts. So let's work out what those values would be. So we take the 128 here, we subtract the 56 from it, which gives us the value of 72. So we make this pixel to the right be zero, but that's gonna generate its own error. And so we do exactly the same thing in, which would generate an error which would go here. This was too dark by 72, which means we need to raise this pixel by so much, which would make it white. But we also need to raise this pixel, this pixel, which is also that pixel, and so on. So we've got to pass the error out. Amongst. And if we repeat this out over the whole image, we can convert our continuous tone image here into a set of pixels that are either black or white, but which are compensating for the error. And so again, we'll give the appearance of the original gray things. But if you were to zoom in on this, you would see that rather than having a regular pattern, it would look a lot more random. You'd have sort of clusters of things. Actually, these numbers were chosen 3 16ths, 5 16ths, 1 16th, 7 16th, so that for 50% gray, you do get that checkerboard pattern. But for other things, you get different patterns. The advantage of this is that each of the dots are a single pixel wide, rather than before on the other side of the west, some were a single pixel, some got bigger, some got smaller. Here, everything would end up as a single pixel. So what we've been talking about is spatial dithering. We've been taking the, either the error and diffusing it out over the image or using an order thing over the image to create the dithering. You can also dither in time. So some of the uh, plasma televisions and actually some LCDs as well to try and create the grayscales, rather than dither 
just in space, they also dither in time. So what they do is rather than having the pixel be white all the time and they're all black all the time to create the spatial dither, they have it flashing very fast between the two things. So it looks grey because it's flashing faster than the eye can see. Black than white, the black than white, the black than white, 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 black than white. Is it kind of a bit more for the history books this then? Uh, it's still, I mean, printers are still black and white. Printers either can put a blob of ink or they can't put a blob of ink, they can put a blob of toner or they can't, with the exception of dye sublimation ones where they can start to mix the colours together in different ratios as they're subliming the um, inks and so on. It's still used in television, for example. The camera Sean's using to film this, I think, has a 10-bit sensor, but it's recording at 8 bits, and so it'll be dithering down the, the high-end bits, the ninth and 10th bit, down to the 8 bits to create something that you can see on YouTube and so on. So it's still used. I don't think it'll go away. At least you haven't asked me about it on, in audio. We set that again, and now we're going across here. Is 128 greater than 128? Still no. Not. So we leave that blank. So now we come down onto line two and we do the same thing with the second line here. Is 128 greater than 192? No. Right, okay, we leave it. Is 128 greater than zero? Yes. Okay, so we get the program to set. 